सर मैं ऑडियो वीडियो म्यूट पे जा रही हूँ आपको हम लोग हिंट कर देंगे व्हेन वी आर स्टार्टिंग Hi dear friends. Good evening again. And the last one. Thank you. Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, you can start now. So, I'm going to the audio mute. 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 हेलो सर सर यू आर लाइव नाउ गुड इवनिंग योर फ्रेंड्स एंड आई थिंक यू मस्ट बी एंजॉइंग दिस लॉकडाउन स्टूडेंट प्लीज बी होम बी सेफ एंड योर मोस्ट प्रीशियस्ट फॉर द सोसाइटी यू मस्ट हैव एंजॉयड द प्रीवियस लेक्चर बाय डॉक्टर रोहित सो नाउ दिस प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन दिस न्यू कांसेप्ट्स इन क्रॉनिक राइनोसाइनोसाइटिस इफ यू वन जस्ट सी दिस पिक्चर बिकॉज़ दे इवन Uh, management of chronic crs crs still we are not sure which way to go and uh, we are doing this endoscopic science only since three to four decades still every day we, every day we get new thesis new concepts of this management the topic is new concepts new ways to manage chronic rhinosinusitis and this word itis is suggests that it could be a infection but it is not the infection it is not it is not the infection if you go back to th three to Three, four decades back, and where the concept of uh, fast wave mesoclinal and uh, stromberger started, and they thought that remove uh, the management for the chronic CRS is CRS is the remove disease from the ostrimity complex, ethmoid, antechamber, mucosal contact area, clear out the disease from the nasal cavity, and open out the obstructive obstructive part from the sinuses and its opening. and uh, the patient should patient should be okay later on but it doesn't happen it didn't happen and uh, somehow uh, the so much recurrent threat uh, suggested the people to go for the researches and the failure of surgery in allergic polyposis or very early recurrence in well operated case very much very good operated case of crs made them to uh, think again and they went for the researches 
and this presentation is, is a collaboration of the practical experience medical surgical literature and allergic morphology that we will share right now just see this uh, video if you see the video the, uh, the patient is having polyposis allergic polyposis and uh, lots of discharge is there you can see high deviation of little spur is there but the typical look of the uh, polyps is typical allergic and uh, uh, we think polyps are there and why we avoid why we think that we should not do this surgery because chance of recurrence are there but i think this is not fair we should operate them and just follow the basic pre operative for operative and post operative procedures and if we follow all the things you can get a better result second point is that why we get so early recurrence after doing wonderful surgery if you see your few patients that after 2 to 3 months you get uh, some cobblestone appearance of the polyps in the nasal cavity and operative area so we should know why it is happening and why how we can correct it that we will share right now and then third point is that how we can get such get such a beautiful cavity in our all the cases it is a ent surgeon's wish that he should get such cavity in his in his or her follow up cases up to 2 to 3 months or 5 or 6 months so how we can get this beautiful cavity in our cases all these points we will discuss here right now and uh, as suggest we actually the definition of crs is between, as per the ars or european renal society the definition of this crs is when there is a there is a uh, two or more symptoms for more than 3 months if we have patient is having two or three more symptoms more than 3 months then we can consider it is a crs case chronic renal synovitis case the symptoms are like uh, Nasal blockage, congestion, nasal discharge, as, as it could be a colored one, and uh, with lots of headache, headache, and uh, discomfort in uh, orbital area, or loss of smell. Supported by the endoscopic examination, which shows that it is involving the ostomitic complex and ischemic recess, as well as supported by the radiological findings, which goes in favor of these presenting symptoms. Then we can say. That patient is having chronic sinus sinusitis. Again, I would say that sinusitis means it is not an infection. After so much of researches, we found that, and uh, of two to three decades, that it is not a purely infective disease. It is a purely inflammatory disease, or where the immune complex immunity plays a role. So it is a pure immune complex mediated disease. We have to keep in mind we should not go for the surgery on the cases. Surgery plays a very limited role. it is a purely medical disease and we have to take this point as a uh, carry on message for this so we know that uh, each human being has a two types of immunity one is innate immunity which is present in the body in the nasal cavity and one is acquired immunity which is the person acquired from the from the surroundings and from the atmosphere innate immunity our nasal cavity is very much rich in the immunity and the best part is that we have a very strong, very good surface epithelium in nasal cavity which protects the nose from the outside it was we have a very good mucociliary movement ciliary movements are there which propel out the uh, infection or you can say uh, allergens from one point to nasal pharynx and third part is very much important is a bunch of the enzymes secreted by the nasal cavity nose nose and there is enzymatic proteins which uh, you can say acts as a phagocytic agent and destroy that uh, tissue destroy the outside insert whether it is a Infection, whether it is a cilia, whether it is a colon, etc. That is the innate, innate immunity a person has, and uh, if there is a more or the his you know, this uh, immunity is less, whenever there is a disturbance, when there is a breach in the nasal epithelium and or the mucosal mucociliary system, by any way, by any way, it leads to evolution of the adaptive or acquired immunity. it is start playing along with this cascades of the enzymatic bunch and express the disease in different forms depending on the cause depending on the cause defector the person present in different way so adaptive uh, immunity is very difficult and uh, it will take i think 2 uh, 3 hours to explain it and 20 30 pages so it is not a very so i have just tried my best to summarize this how it works in a single page just uh, see this slide and i think you can take a snap or you can screen sort of this which afterward so whenever there is a, any antigen in any form whether it is a pollen whether it is infection bacteria whatever it is whenever it comes in contact with the nasal epithelium that is from where there is a, a stimulation of the pattern recognition receptor it and it 
acts in a different way. It produces lots of cytokines present as a cavity. That is tissue specific lipoprotein, interleukin 25, interleukin 23, which activate ILC and innate lymphocyte cells to and on the other way, by the other uh, track, it can ac activate the candida cells, which produces the T lymphocytes. T lymphocytes is the hallmark, that is the platform from it is a bliss force of the nasal cavity from the where that. And here, the dysfunctional host environment plays a role. If the immunity is very good, host immunity is good, then everything will be settled down. One, if it is not a proper way, then the disease process starts. Depending on the cause, like it is an infective variant, then it will stimulate the TLP cells with the NFA and produce lots of neutrophil. Or it can it, it will stimulate, if it is more of the allergic or neutrophil type, it will stimulate T helper cells too. And Interleukin 5, it will produce uh, eosinophil. eosinophil. We all know that it produces major basic protein, cation protein, proteins, eosinophil protease, etc. Or T helper cells to convert into T helper cells 9 and uh, THL, TH9 cell, student interleukin 9 and produce lots of the mast cell. And T helper cells to the IL4 or IL13 produce lots of, activate B lymphocyte. And B lymphocyte, we know that it produces lots of. Uh, IgE through plasma cells. And whenever we know that, whenever there's a uh, IgE, when it comes in contact with the mast cell, produces lots of uh, initial histamine, proteolytic, and then nitric oxides, etc. And it produces our early phase reaction that we see in our result as in symptoms. So these are uh, early phase, and if neutrophilic variant is there, it produces the late phase reaction which comes in the form of mucosal edema, mucosal secretions, leukocyte infiltration, epithelial damage, bronchospasm. So all these things, as if eosinophilic or neutrophilic or histamine proteolytic enzyme, all these things cause, basically cause epithelial damage. So starting from antigen to the epithelial damage, there's a complex cycle, which I have just tried in my best way to just merit in a half way and a single slide. So you can just take a uh, sort here and then just and go through it later on. So that is the, this slide is very important because every treatment part, the future treatment part is depends. We have to, if we target, we just block this pathway, we block by this pathway, this pathway, this pathway, anything by, uh, by monoclonal antibodies which are available in the market. So we can control this uh, disease pattern by controlling this. Disease. So that is the future therapy we are expecting. So after seeing the slide, we can assess that we have two types of coronary granulocytes that is with polyposis or without polyposis. With polyposis, this carries only 10 to 15 percent of the cases. Uh, the treatment part is totally different. And if you see the spectrum, uh, depends on the eosinophilia. If eosinophilia is, it is along with the eosinophilia, then it has more of the polyposis. If you see the histopathology, most, most of the, you can see by the endoscopic examination, it is uh, polypoid, it means it's a polyposis or it's a rhinosinusitis. And it is a in the sinusitis, it is more of the fibrosis. In polyposis, it is lots of edema. Treatment part is totally different, pattern is totally different in both these patterns. How we can diagnose, we all know that nasal endoscopy is the only standard. Pedology, we all know that no need to discuss over here. Nasal swab, if you see a a chronic case of recurrent discharge, go for the culture sensitivity, you can find out well, which bacteria is there, whether it's fungal, non-fungal, and it's which bacteria is there that you can plan accordingly. Return. This is, I think, very important slide is that sensitivity test. If you see a patient of being operated many times, he's coming with recurrent uh, nasal polyposis, or there is a family history of uh, acidic sensitivity. In those cases, you can try sensitivity test, and I think that Histopathology is very important if you are seeing a case being operated by someone else and uh, just ask for the histopathology report. If he is not having, just ask for the block so you can assess. If it's not, then you can plan histopathology. Or in post-operative cases, plan your treatment after seeing the histopathology because I will discuss how important is the histopathology report for the further management. Few more tests are there. That is the absolute eosinophil count. Is, again, is very important uh, test. And I think it also guides us about the post-operative management. Serum Ig level is serum Ig level is very much important again. Serum Ig level, if the Ig level is high, it suggests the purely allergic disorder, and you have to manage the. If the Ig level is low, then I think we should not go for the surgery directly because we, are, we should think about the infective part. If it is very high, then we can uh, we should treat the case 
and explain the patient that in the future you, you may have to go for the immunotherapy or uh, you have to control the Ig level for the better follow up. Serum immunoglobin in refractory case is very important. CRP test, if there's a recurrent infection, then it can be tested. that is CRP test, which just if it is high CRP, it will be over of pathology. Vitamin D is uh, recently we have we are seeing we are doing using this test since many years, and I think vitamin D in present in, in new scenario it is a very high level, high value, and many cases we are seeing which uh, improved with the proper vitamin D management. So, uh, so, so there's some high risk association or comorbidity with CRS. We have to take care of this part also. No need to uh, uh, give 100% on this, your CRS, but also take part of this thing that is allergic rhinitis also. Allergic rhinitis, uh, we can see with endoscopic examination, and there's a lots of uh, typical look vesopulta rhinitis, other forms are there. We have to treat that part also to get a perfect result. So, asthma is a known fact. Anatomical variation is very important. We do operate the case, but we neglect some part like very high deviation. As far as we can see very clearly, so we can look at Sometimes we see lots of high deviation being not touched by previous surgeon. If you do a very good surgery and post operative, you cannot take care of that part which is hidden by the high deviation. So that has to be taken care of doing the smoking is well known fact, immunodeficiency, osteitis. I will discuss this osteitis, aspirin, intolerance, and biofilm in detail because these are few. Biofilm, we all know it is the latest, latest human site in all aspects, nasal surgery, whether it's the sinus surgery, implant surgery, ear surgery. I think what is biofilm? Biofilm is nothing but just a uh, bacteria being covered by extracellular, extracellular polyvalent substance, EPS, and it is it protects from the ultraviolet exposure, metatoxicity, acid exposure, dehydrous and penalty, phagocytic, antibiotic, antibiotic, etc. So we should take care of this thing in nasal cavity. It is very important. If we see a chronic case, different discharge uh, film, we can see the nasal cavity. Or even in the post op cavity, if we find a very, uh, means sinus being uh, treated very well by medical treatment is not responding, then we should take care. How we can manage biofilm during surgery? We should take a very high pressure targeted antibiotic saline irrigation for some time. Take out the film, take out the content from the sinus cavity. And in post operative cases, if after the sensitivity test, if it is more, and most of the common cause of biofilms are pseudomona and uh, gram positive, like staphylococcus, then we can treat them with a nasal wash with the tocomycin, 5 billion per liter, or mucorosin, which is not easily available in our India. So we can uh, get it through the Amazon and other sources. So we can wash those uh, cavity uh, with uh, this screw solution, as uh, depends on the culture report. Sodium hydrochloride irrigation is very important. Colored delivery is, is now with, uh, very much available in the market by a few companies, and that is the strongest antiseptic available uh, in the market. And Manikohani, all we know that is methyl, it contains methyl glyphosol. You can try this thing in your know, during operative. Uh, we, are, we have tried in our uh, ears as the implant cases, even you can try in the sinus cavity. Few more uh, things which are being commonly used in the world. This is one more important part is aspirin exaggerated respiratory disease. These are, these are the cases which do not respond to the recurrent surgery. They come again after a few months with the polyposis. And what exactly aspirin does? It just says it's a metabolic, we know that arachidonic acid uh, metabolic, we all know that it uh, arachidonic is converted into prostaglandin through cyclooxygenase or COX-1-2. And the prostaglandin is the anti inflammatory One more cycle is there that it converted into leukotrienes to lipooxygenase. What aspirin does is aspirin just uh, block this COX-2 and it, uh, that has there is no production of the prostaglandin. In fact, it upregulates lipooxygenase and produces lots of leukotrienes. And leukotrienes is pro-inflammatory, which cause these all symptoms. So aspirin cause and the, the aspirin hypersensitive cases do uh, create problem because of this. If those were, uh, we cannot, uh, if suppose we find a case of aspirin sensitivity, just do the surgery and later you can try the, you can aspirin desensitization because you should not, you cannot do de aspirin desensitization before surgery, otherwise you won't be able to do the surgery. So best part is neat and full house fast, proper pro pro post-operative maintenance, do a full house fast. And uh, you can use in a follow-up. 
Xylitol is very good drug. Long term multilucast are recommended. Advise low salicylic diet, avoid berry, dried fruits, alcohol preservatives. Use selective COX2 inhibitors as an analgesic that will help in this And do the aspirin desensitization. The aspirin desensitization it should be done in the hospital, admit the patient for three to four days. And uh, give a start the aspirin from 25 gram to 20 50 gram on the discharge. You have to, business to take aspirin tablet for lifelong. Nowadays, we have uh, aspirin spray like uh, available, which are no right, right now it's not available in India, but I think in the future is we can use aspirin spray for it. Osteitis is the I think I think is the most neglected part, and that's why we recommend to go for the CT scan in all sections. Go. Don't go for the report given by your urologist, but you see also because there, there is any osteitis in previous surgery or in a longer standing case. So these are the is, uh, osteitic cases are uh, uh, classified difficult to treat uh, sinusitis cases. Infection is not all, the only cause. Some, sometimes cytokine selection is proposed. That's why uh, we get in fact uh, this uh, osteitis, this osteitis in our uh, fungal cases also. Most, more often in the revision cases, especially primary radical surgery. Long duration, eosinophilia, biofilmia, a few more causes which are. So we said main treatment is post-operative uh, whole house, remove the osteitis bone from the cavity, post-operative steroid wash with the surgical, like, of course, surgery is the best part. And macrolide, like uh, this, and uh, macrolide are to be given for three to four months, all these cases, and we get a better result. So finally, what exactly is the management? What should, because it is not, it is an immune complex disease. Where the steroid plays a better role, but we cannot give steroid in all the cases. So if you just plan out your management, so we all know that steroid is the most effective. Topical use is most suited, but less effective. Systemic is less uh, less suited, but more effective. But that you have you have to decide as for the patient and as, as for your component patient comfort. Surgery has a very limited role. Just it, it's just sterile ventilation and drainage of the sinus to reduce the inflammatory load to provide access for the topical irrigation and topical spray in future. Future is the target therapy where we have to ex uh, address the pathology in the form of immunomodulators. Uh, so many immunomodulators are available in the market that I will show. Again, I will come back to the, the, the slides shown to you. I told you that there are so many uh, antibody, immunoglobulin antibodies available, which just block the, the, the cytokines at different levels. There are so many different uh, medicines are available. And one of the best ones is Mepolizumab is given for the somatic cases and uh, Lovelizumab is very much available nowadays. And again, this uh, IG blocker is the Omelizumab is very much available. You can, and it's FDA approved in our India, many, many, uh, especially in asthmatic cases, they are using a lot. We have mast cell stabilizer, you know. So these are the target therapy. We can block the process of the rhinosinusitis at primary level. And I think one, more important thing is bacterial acids, which is, I think we are using a lot since many, uh, two, three years, and we're getting uh, very good treatment in these cases. And these are present in this form of sprays and oral tablets also. One more target therapy. We all know that allergens are uh, positive factor for the, uh, this all the cycle. So as for the area guidelines, first thing, the main thing is that we have to avoid, uh, this avoid this allergen. We can cover, preclude ourselves from this allergy like we are doing for the coronavirus right now. Though it looks very difficult, particularly difficult. And tech, uh, next is the uh, uh, barrier enforcing versus in the form of uh, white wrestlings, uh, foreign broker cream, microemulsions, seawater gel. And one more thing, which is very much is available nowadays in the market is HPMC, then the hydroprofile. It is a it is we get in the spray form and that we are using in our regular cases since long time getting well. What exactly does it is a water soluble polymer that bind retain water thick and make a thick film in the nasal cavity and it lubricate also when applied to the nasal mucosa. It is in the form of it protect your nasal mucosa from the outside insult like pollen or any infected material. How it works is just like a nasal spray which we use in our other spray form. And one more thing is recent development. I think it is in the uh, early phase of uh, researches that we all know that we have different gas receptors in our oral cavity, tongue, base of tongue, base of tongue, these are the, and we have bitter taste receptor on our base of tongue. That is a uh, 
he has on 38 and uh, as per the literature as per this we have the beta test which are to rs and there's a one isomer is there which is t2r38 which is present in the nasal cavity or a pharynx also and one very specific genotype is t2sr38 which is being found related with your chronic sinus. how it works t2rs38 is a an isomer of bitter taste receptor especially found in the oral nasal cavity that is t2r38 how it works whenever there's an insult in nasal cavity like in the form of uh, bacterial infection like pseudomonas or gram negative what exactly gram negative bacteria produce uh, acyl homocysteine lactone that is ahl which stimulate t2r38 and t2r38 produces nitric oxide to calcium and that nitric oxide increase the mucociliary clearance and dietary bacteria and we have been found that the, the genotype t2r38 is associated with the incidence of urti and crs that is a new study and it has a therapeutic value also because uh, there are so many bitter taste receptors agonists are in such as and again in this trial and that is the future of our treatment for this chronic cancer cases supportive medical therapy so we have two groups one is with polyposis without polyposis with polyposis of course in both the cases the nasal irrigation is must topical steroid works in both the cases oral corticosteroid and montelukast works in with polyposis cases not needed and oral antibiotic being used that we are using in our cases with polyposis doxycycline and in uh, without polyposis we are using lots of macrolides nowadays with very good there. few more things i would like to share these are the different concept which is the vitamin d and uh, everybody says that it is uh, in every case people are using vitamin d but in sinus anesthetic or stomatic it is very important vitamin d, how it is work it is deficiency is vitamin d deficiency is associated more severe for sinus anesthetic with polyposis and afrs is it is a it is a, it is a anti proliferative reduce fibroblast proliferation in, in is augment it augment innate and adaptive both the immunities by increase the nasal antimicrobial peptides reduce secretion of the eosinophil chemotactic agents inhibits pro inflammatory cytokines and proliferate of proliferation of the t lymphocytes it regulates susceptibility to the contaminators and the deficiency is more associated with the uh, severity of the symptoms. How this doxycycline is affected? We give in our uh, without poly uh, with polyposis cases. How it is a broad spectrum antibacterial activity, especially against the In uh, in low dose, it acts as a very good immunomodulator agent, and we are used. Uh, and it 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 just in, does intrinsic anti. It has the anti intrinsic anti inflammatory effects. Why? Uh, inhibit matrix metalloprotein is reduced local IG production, inhibit myeloperoxidase, reduce expression of interleukin 5, down regulate production of the interleukin 5 and interleukin 13. Macrolide is a buzzing topic in our uh, TNT nowadays, and lots of people are using it in our um, inflammatory cases with the, where the no polyps are known. Even in a post op case, we are using a lot. It has a good intracellular accumulation, alter the architecture and the structure of the bacterial biofilm, inhibit a key pro-inflammatory transcription factor. And that I told in the first slide I told you. And uh, it has a disrupt, it has a tendency to disruption of the interfaction. It limit migration, addition, and oxidative response of the neutrophil, inhibit the release of toxins from the stock or yes, inhibit the production of interleukin 5, interleukin 8. And I think amongst the Macrolides, as for literature, roxothromycin is most recommended, but I think we are using a lot of clarithromycin, which has very good effect. And we, we can use to TMG5 once a day for two to three months, and uh, it's a wonder drug. Regarding the, I was just few words about allergic fungal dynamics and arthritis. We all know so nothing very interesting. Uh, this is, is a type 1 reaction, and there's no film without sinus tissue invasion, non invasive fungal dynamics. And the treatment part is the uh, main thing is that full house fast with very strict follow for lifelong, no role of any antifungal agent. So there are few cases where we should not hit and we should not go for any medical trial, medical treatment. These are few cases which we should operate as early as possible, like fungal wall and extensive polyposis, autoangiogenic uh, CRS, and AFRS associated with the orbital endocrine extension and mucobioceles 
and anatomical variation. I told you earlier that we should not wait for these cases, do operate them and repeat it oral steroid for symptomatic control. If we are using, you have to uh, suppose a patient, you have to give a course of steroids for two to three weeks, more than two times in three months, then this, that is the case, uh, really need a uh, surgical treatment. And few more are there. So that, that was all about the, how we can manage, what are the new things which we have in our basket. So few words about the post-operative, that is very important, that is the post-operative, I will not go in detail, but few things I would say it is much, that is that we just do the surgery and forget it. I think we should do sinus cavity, the bright is must in all the cases, whether it is a limited phase, whether it's extensive phase, whether whatever variety of case you are doing, surgery you're doing, you have to do a proper debridement in all of this. Pontiole cause depends on the cause and anti is symptomatic. Mucolytic has some intimidating effect you can use in a whole. Systemic steroid is as well as oral antibiotics again depends on the positive level. I think. Few things I would like that topical steroid is must and has to be given for a long time in all the cases. New drug which is not available in India but it is very much in US that is because of the cost factor that is the drug eluting stent which put in the bait cavity like a smart cavity and which includes spectin microgram made momentasone for three months. It is a wonder drug, comes in the name, with the name of Propel. But again, the cost factor is there, that's why in the India, not a maybe future, we may get this thing. That is, again, I would think the best, most important nuclear irrigation has to be done in all the cases. What it is must, which material we use, which method we have to use, we have to explain the patient, we should explain the relatives, how you keep your staff for this work. Must is must, material, Nowadays, we are using saline is available, but we are using budicot as fuel in all the cases. And we add one budicot as fuel, two, one and in one liter of water. If you ask the patient to use 250 ml per day, per day for the wash, once or twice a day. So it, uh, this dose doesn't affect the hypophysial, uh, pituitary hypophysial axis. And you can, patient can use for a long time. It has a wonderful effect. And since we are using since two, three to three years, and we are getting unavailable with that. The nasal irrigation, the position has to be explained to the patient depending on which sideness you are going to wash because you have done a front surgery, then you need to clean that you have done your extensive surgery in front of sinus and you have to use different position. Explain the patient in follow up. At least you can keep the patient in your ward for one day, then you can tell them. So that is, and we all know that irrigation is the most important part of uh, this uh, post-operative care. There are so many advantages that I will not go in detail, but we all know. So these are a few advantages of the uh, nasal irrigation. And uh, this is slide is very important. I think we are following it since long time. One thing is that these are two most important prognostic indicators of your CRS management. That is not a score. And that is a, a second is the histopathology report. Keep, you can take a uh, screenshot. So, we are, uh, we are keeping this paper preoperatively, postoperatively. We just uh, find out at the, how much it's not a score is this patient is having. And we give one copy to the patient and the relatives and ask them to note down these uh, points. And you can guide each point has five marks. And there are so many 22 symptoms. This is just like a, your exam mark. You can tell that it, uh, this patient was having 65, it's not a score before surgery. Now he's having 28 to 35. So it, you can, and you can involve the family, so he will, they will be more concerned about this post-operative care. They will come in regular follow-up. Regarding the histopathology report, we do histopathology report in all the cases with these headings. Every point has a valid uh, uh, value. And like suppose, for example, basement membrane thickening. If the basement membrane thickening is very much more than 10 micrometers, means suggest that patient is that because I go in a remodeling form, and you have to tell the patient was you have to come in regular follow for years because your disease pattern is very thick. Fibrosis, if it is more of fibrosis, it goes in favor of your inflammatory, your esophageal count, esophageal. Uh, there's so many points. You should ask your pathologist to give the report in this format and just assess, and it gives a very good impression of your follow up impulse. These are things. So we just, uh, if we do is uh, compare that average uh, smoothogram, whether it is a chronic uh, sinusitis with polyposis or without polyposis. And if we do after the surgery, after three to four months, this uh, is not a scores or it comes very down up to future. But again, there's a hike because of lack of follow-up. 
lack of this and so just our television that follow up is very important whatever approach we are using whatever drug we are using but follow up is very important and if you follow this curve we can get a better result in you know, your all the cases so in summarize if you sum if i summarize all the things regarding crs crs is a medical disease and has appropriate medical management is this soul it is the key of the treatment never directly jump for the surgery never go for the tell the patient that i will give you, i will do surgery you will get a 100% result never tell that even you can't say 50% because everything depends on the how you manage how he is taking care of the medical treatment and follow up it is a complex multifactorial disease so the key is to understand pathophysiology without knowing the pathophysiology you should not go for the surgery directly and have has various genotype phenotypes you should know this role and flows of surgery is very limited i told you every time they don't jump for the surgery in all the cases it is since it is a medical disease treated medically by different way i told you in doctor post operative irrigation is the ministry of good turn follow and target therapy are the future that i just uh, summarized it and main thing is your follow up and one trick i can share with you that just if you are doing in private just charge your four post operative visit in a uh, during surgery at least he would come to you at least four five six times follow up and that is more than enough for your follow up visit thank you very much for this uh, i think i have taken more time i am just waiting for the questions uh dr monish grover is the uh, uh, thank you dr my monish dr ramesh roy chronic mucosal discharge in spite of best surgical procedure and post operative treatment in follow up is a real problem yes follow up is a real problem and uh, that i told you that you can uh, give a is not a score chart to the patient so if we have a is not a score you can give it to a three copies to the patient just telling that he fill the form every 15 days 15 days two months at least he would be more sincere about his problem and just ask him to uh, come in follow up with that is not a score paper and one more thing i told you that you can charge your regarding private and charge for for post operative visit in your surgical treatment and though it looks uh, very but it is good for you can return it back afterward no problem but at least he would come in follow up for uh, your surgery uh, as i sang jaiswal dr isang jaiswal dr rono manuka hani treating bioron yeah yeah it's uh, been proven because i have seen in our cases also and it has for the literature also Uh, it is wonderful drug, and we are using a lot, especially not uh, sinus cavity, not but in our implant cases and other cases. But it has a great role in uh, biofilm, not as running to uh, therapy. They just with that uh, ideal time for desensitization for icing aspirin. You cannot do the aspirin desensitization before surgery because once you start aspirin, you cannot do the surgery. So just uh, treat the patient. after six uh, one month or after six weeks you can start the desensitization once nasal cavity is filled up and uh, you have to keep the patient in uh, hospital for 3 to 4 days any any question i think that's i think this one is okay any questions thank you very much my dear friends and i think Uh, again i would request be home take care of your family take care of uh, your society and take care of your country thank you very much hello going on it's all right hello hello